بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على نبيه المصطفى ما بعد القرآن الكريم نور القروب وشفاء الصدور وعافية الإيمان وكلام الرحمن لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد والسراج المنير والطريق القويم العاصم من الفتن والمخرج من المحن عن علي رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ستكون فتن قلت فما المخرج منها يا رسول الله قال كتاب الله إلى أخي للحديث My dear respected brothers and elders Inshallah over the next few days I hope and plan to give you a little insight into the juz that is going to be recited in Taraweeh. So for example, today at the Madrasa, we will be reciting the 23rd juz, the 23rd chapter. So I will try and give you a little insight. Obviously, there is no time to cover the entire sipara, there is no time to cover a whole entire surah. But we will have a little glimpse, we will have a little flavor of what is going to be recited in the 23rd Jews today. Before I start, I think it's important, it's relevant that we talk for a few minutes on the month of Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ All you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, All you who believe, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ Fasting has been prescribed on you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Like it was prescribed on those that came before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may become righteous. And this is the bit I want to focus on for a few minutes. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may become righteous. We have to see how in the month of Ramadan, taqwa, righteousness is generated. Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tanwi has said that if a person was to fast in the month of Ramadan with its proper discipline and proper etiquette, then he takes or he has taken a huge step on the step ladder of taqwa, on the step ladder of righteousness. And what is the meaning of taqwa? The meaning of taqwa is that a person refrains from sin. Number one, a person refrains from sin by visualizing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, a man should think that I am the servant of Allah. And Allah has his eyes on me. And a day will come when I will have to give account of my deeds. This is taqwa. When a man refrains from sin with this background and with this realization, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ and for that person who has the fear of standing before his Lord. And he restrains his soul. He restrains his soul from lust. Hawa in Arabic means lust. And he restrains his soul from lust. Then Jannah, the gardens of paradise, will be his final abode. These ayat, these few verses bring out the true <coughs> meaning of taqwa. Fasting, therefore, is the ideal way, an ideal training of a person acquiring taqwa. However sinful a person may be, when he observes his fast, he goes through many hardships. It is a hot summer's day. He's sitting alone in his room. 
he's thirsty, there's a refrigerator, there's ice cold water inside, okay? And his soul is telling him that have a few sips. No one's going to find out. When you walk out of the room, no one's going to know or no one's going, going to be any the wiser. Okay? So the soul is urging him that take a few sips. There is no one to admonish you and when you walk out of here, no one will know any different. However, notwithstanding this, this person, he does... Oh, sorry. Notwithstanding this, this person does not break his fast. And the only reason he does not break his fast, because he firmly believes that his master and creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for whose pleasure he is fasting, he is watching him. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, As-sawmu li wa ana aji'zi bihi. Okay? That fasting has been observed for my sake and I will compensate for it myself. I will recompense, I will recompense for it myself. For other deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has men mentioned in the Quran, Man jaa bil hasana falahu ashu amsaliha. Whoever does one good deed, I will give him tenfold. Okay? In other places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned seventyfold. For charity, a person that gives in charity. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned up to seven hundred times. That he will be rewarded up to seven hundred times. But for fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, I shall personally recompensate my servant because he had all the facilities to break his fast. Okay? He had all the facilities to break his fast. Okay? All the facilities were available for him to quench his thirst. There was cold water, but out of fear. Out of fear, okay? And the fact that he realized that he has to stand up in front of me to give account of his deeds, out of this fear, <coughs> he never broke his fast. Okay. So, this feeling a person has, this feeling a person has, and belief is taqwa. Allah has therefore said in the Quran that He has prescribed fasting. Ya ayuhaladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. Okay. Allah has said that He has prescribed fasting to provide a practical training for us to practice taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the correct understanding. Okay, moving on. Like I mentioned, we've got the 23rd juz that is going to be recited in Tarawih today. Okay, so we've got Surah Al Yasin will be completed. We've got Surah Al Safat and we've got Surah Al Sad and the first few verses of Surah Al Zumur. I mean, all surahs in the, in the Quran are equally important. However, some surahs have special benefits and virtues. Yasin is one of those special surahs. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has called it the heart of the Quran. What has he called it? The heart of the Quran. This was the 36th surah to be revealed. It's a Meccan surah, so basically the, Quran, the surah was revealed in Mecca. It has five rukus. Can anyone care to guess how many verses Surah Al Yasin has? Jabid. Even I didn't know until I checked. Until obviously, obviously when I was going through, we read Yasin every day. Does anyone care to guess how many verses Surah Al Yasin has? Yeah, yeah. Mashallah. 83, that's correct, yes. Even I didn't know until obviously I started reading up on the 23rd chapter. So it has 83 verses. Mashallah. Three main themes have been discussed in the this, in this surah, which pretty much sum up the message of the entire Quran. Okay? The first theme is Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Risalah. Okay? The prophethood of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the judgment day. Okay? Yawm al-Qiyamah. So these three things have been, these are the three themes of Surah Al-Yaseen. 
okay, which have been mentioned moving on I decided um, which ruku to pick out of Surah Al-Yasin obviously like I mentioned at, at the beginning we can't go through the entire Jews of 23rd Sipara okay we can't even cover the entire Surah because of time okay so I just thought I'll just choose a little ruku okay out of Surah Al-Yasin today and we will go through it um, I really wanted to go through the ruku وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ okay however this is quite a lengthy um, a ruku and at the same time it will take uh, a good half an hour to 45 minutes to go through the entire ruku and to appreciate it so I've chosen وَنُوفِقَ فِي السُورِ the fourth ruku okay so we're just going to do a few ayat of the fourth ruku and inshallah then I will uh, let you guys go I know um, many of you want to recite the Quran okay and it is the month of Quran and we should be reciting it as much as possible but we will go through a few ayat what you can do, I don't mind, uh, you can take your phones out, um, of the, uh, you can turn to the fourth ruku and you can um, follow the translation if you feel like. Okay, so in the, on, in the fourth ruku, the first ayah, just before the fourth ruku, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned the first, the, the blowing of the trumpet. Okay, so <coughs> if you look at the ayat before, there is a, uh, in verse 52, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ تَوْصِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرُجِعُونَ Okay, that when the trumpet is blown for the first time, the people that have gathered, they will not even have time to give wasiyah, meaning write a will, or tell somebody to do something on their behalf. فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ تَوْصِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرُجِعُونَ And those people that are outside their homes, okay, they will not even have the time to go back into their homes. Okay, وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرُجِعُونَ So this is what is discussed before وَنُفِخَ فِي السُورُ The ruku that we were just going to cover. Okay, the few ayat that we were going to cover today. Okay, so before this, the first... Um, when, when the horn will be blown for the first time, this is what was discussed prior to one of your khafisur. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, uh, in the fourth ruku, the first ayah, one of your khafisur, faidahum min al ajadati ila rabbihim yan silun. Okay, and the horn will be blown, and suddenly they will be rushing from their graves towards their Lord. Fala, one of your khafisur, faidahum min al ajadati ila rabbihim yan silun. Okay, there are further descriptions in other parts of the Quran. Okay, in Surah Al-Ma'arij, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has men mentioned, يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ سِرَاعًا They will come out of their graves in, um, in a rush, in, in, in haste. Okay, and in Surah Al-Zumur, which is the last surah of Surah al uh, in the, of, the, of the 23rd chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْذُرُونَ And they will come out suddenly from their graves, and they will stand up looking around. So the next ayah, one of the fifth surah, "Faida hum min al-ajdaat ila Rabbihim yansilun." Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the next ayah is, "Qalu ya wailana man baghthna min marqadina hada ma wa'ad al-Rahman wa sadaq al-Mursalun." In kana illa sayhat wa'ida, faida hum jamii al ladina muhbarun. Fal yom la tuzlamu nafs shay'a, wa la tujzawna illa ma kuntum ta'malun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that qalu ya waylana they will say woe to us who has raised us from our sleeping place this is what the Rahman had promised and the messengers had told the truth in kanat illa sayhata wahida it will be no more than a single cry and no time they will be arraigned and in no time they will be arraigned meaning they will be lined up in front of us they will be made uh, present in front of us Today, nobody will be subjected to any injustice, okay, and you will not be recompensed for, and you will be only recompensed for what you used to do. Now, down here, the commentary of the ayah 
qalu ya waynana man ba'athana min marqadina in verse 52 so when of the sur fa idha hum min al-ajdaat ila rabbihim yansilun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the horn will be blown and we will come out of our graves and ila rabbihim yansilun and we will walk towards uh, um uh, in in haste we will walk towards the um, day of resurrection okay the next ayah, qalu ya waylana, the, comment, uh, the commentators have mentioned here that qalu ya waylana, why will they say these words? qalu ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina okay, woe to us who has raised us from our sleeping place okay, so the disbelievers who are already suffering punishment in their grave okay, and there is no sign of relief there is no sign of relief of the punishment that they are receiving in their grave. Okay? Yet, the punishment of the day of Qiyamah, okay, compared to the punishment that, that, that they are receiving in the grave, is far greater. This is why they will cry out, قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعَثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا That we were comfortable in our graves. We were okay. Okay? Who, did, who decided to raise us from our graves? It would have been better if we had actually stayed there okay and a response to this will come from either the angels or the common believers okay هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون moving on after فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions okay the people of Jannah إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here Inna ashab al-jannati al-yawma fi shughulin faakihun That the people of paradise are engaged to there in their activities Happily enjoying them They and their spouses are in pleasant shades Reclining on couches Lahum fiha faakiha Okay, for them there are fruits and for them there is whatever they ask for. Walahum ma yadda'oon. Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim. Salam is the word they receive from our merciful Lord. Okay, looking at a few bits of commentary on these few ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions inna ashab al-jannati al-yawma fi shughulin faakihun. Okay. That the people of paradise are engaged today in their activities. Fi shughul. Shughul in Arabic means activities. Fakihun happily enjoying them. The word faqih here, it signifies happiness of the heart as well as the happiness of one's surroundings. Okay. And then down here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned fi shughul. Inna ashab al Inna ashab al jannah Jannati al yawma fi shughul in faqihun. Okay. So one of the commentators has mentioned here that when in Jannah, there will be no religious duty. Okay, we're not expected to perform Salah, etc. Okay, nor will we have a job, nor will we be earning any type of livelihood. Okay, so would this lack of activity not leave one, one uptied or bored? Okay, so this commentator has mentioned that fi shughul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the word fi shughul that they will be um, engaged in their activities here Allah, um, one of the commentators has, has mentioned that enjoyment itself enjoyment itself will be their principal activity say subhanallah enjoyment itself will be their principal activity in jannah and the question of any boredom simply does not arise so the principal activity of the people of jannah will be enjoyment okay and then in the next verse uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned whom azwajuhum they and their spouses okay spouses wa azwajuhum this is plural of zawj so along with the wife of the mortal world so along with the wife of the dunya okay you will be resting 
okay, with, uh, with the, uh, this includes obviously the whores of paradise, okay, as well. And then finally, وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدْعُونَ Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, uh, mentioned in the next ayah, لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَا وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدْعُونَ Okay, and one of the commentators has mentioned here and explained this word يَدْعُون Okay, he, he mentioned that this word is derived from the word da'wah in Arabic, which means to call. Okay, so whatever a person in Jannah will call for, it will come to them. Okay, it will come to them immediately. Okay, and then the commentator has further mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not used the word yes alone here. Okay, meaning ask for. One is to call for, one is to ask for. The commentator has mentioned that he's, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not word, uh, used the word yes alone here because when you ask for somebody, you have to, um, when, sorry, when you have to ask for something, then you have to wait for it. Okay? And this is sort of an exertion, meaning you have to, you, you've asked for something, you've wanted something, you've asked for it, and now you have to wait for it. Once you receive it, then you receive it. So this is a sort of exertion. Okay, what's an easier word for exertion in Arabic, uh, in English? Anybody? Meaning you have to work for it a little bit. Okay, exert. this is yeah ex exert exerting. So one, one, so down here, okay, if the word yes alone was used, then it would have it would have meant that a person would have had to exert himself a little bit, meaning try a little bit. Okay, but this is something which Jannah is completely free from. Jannah is free from any sort of exerting or exertion okay whatever you will need okay will be ready and present before you immediately this is what the commentator is trying to explain here between the words yadda'oon when a person calls for something he will have it immediately okay rather than using the word yes alone where he has to ask and exert himself okay he's trying to explain explain to us that there is no exertion in Jannah. Okay, whenever what, whatever a person asks for, okay, he will receive. Inshallah, we will end here and we will continue tomorrow. Obviously, we will not continue with Surah Al Yasin, we will continue with the 24th chapter tomorrow. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to discuss tomorrow, I still have to go through it myself. So, uh, so inshallah, I will uh, read upon something, some portion of the 24th Surah, and I will discuss with it, discuss with you tomorrow, inshallah. I hope uh, our talk today has been beneficial. Um, inshallah, we will continue tomorrow. Jazakallah khairan.